Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun. Today I'm going to teach you how to make your own swatch journal to swatch um, any medium, colored pencils, markers, gel pens, whatever it is. So stick with me and we'll get started. Okay, um, I get a lot of questions from people about the numbers on my colored pencils and what are these about and why in the world do you have your pencils numbered? What is going on there? So this is a cross-reference tool. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do this today as part of your swatching process. So as you can see, um, a lot of these pencils, first of all, they're in a really pretty color family order. Um, I have a hard time reading the gold on the polychromos. I don't know if that's in focus or not. Um, and like this is called geranium, oh, Pale Geranium Lake. I was trying to read the uh, foreign language. I guess that's German um, one. Pale Geranium Lake. So if I go out on Pinterest like I do and I search for color combinations constantly, I have Pinterest folders full of polychromos color combos, um, Prisma color combos. It will say, that somebody used Pale Geranium Lake, Pencil 121, and something else. Well, if I have this without any numbers on it, I'm gonna sit here and have to look through every pencil, and hopefully they're in an organized manner like they are now, to figure out where in the heck is Pale Geranium Lake. Uh, so if you have your pencils numbered, it's real easy. You can go to your color chart, and this one I got from Oh gosh, I believe I got this of oh, Color with Claire. I got it on her Facebook group. Um, so I can't share it with you guys, but if you're a member of that group, it's a free resource there. Pale Geranium Lake 121. Look, that's pencil 19. So all I have to do is go to my little pencil case, grab pencil 19, and then I'm good to go. So by putting numbers on your pencils, it makes it super easy to find the right color you're looking for without having to dig through um, and go back and forth through your pencil case or your box of pencils or whatever to find that exact pencil. So how do you number them? How do you decide on the numbers? Well, there are a lot of awesome resources out here. Uh, let me show you. So like I said, this is the color chart. It's a color family chart for the um, Faber-Castell Polychromos. And I liked the color order that this was in. So I just um, numbered my pencils. Actually, you know what, I take it back. On this one, I hadn't found this chart just yet, and I was having a hard time finding a color chart that I liked. So I just threw all my pencils on the floor and said, what color order looks pretty to the eye? And then I just stuck them in my pencil case that way. And then before numbering them, I found this chart and said, okay, so one, two, so I, oh, actually, you know what, I'm sorry, I had already, Oh my gosh, um, I had already numbered the pencils. So I put them in the case because they were pleasing to my eye. I had numbered them. Then I found the chart and said, okay, white is my pencil number one. Ivory is my pencil number two. So now I just wrote in my own pencil numbers as I have them organized in my case. And that's how I can find these. So in this case, I made up my own numbering system. You can see this is a very loved chart. If you are smart, not like me, you would probably have yours laminated. Okay. Um, for my Prisma colors, let me get that and I'll be right back. So for my Prisma colors, um, I've got this swatch set. And this is from the Mags Tam group I talk about all the time, Crazy for Prisma Color Combinations. And this is a free resource if you're a member of her group. And this is the full set of 150. This does not have the two new purple pencils on here. Um, I believe they are replacing, ooh, is it? Lilac and Parma Violet, or I can't remember. Sorry, guys. But anyway, this one had predetermined numbers for me. So all I had to do was go in and color this and then put the numbers on my pencils and then stuck it in my case in this order. But pencil number one is cream, number two, deco yellow, etc. So you get three pages. You get two boxes. One box I color in um, heavy and one light. So you can see how the color lays down. Um, both ways there and you know these fluorescent 
colors are always wasted. Do y'all use the fluorescent colors? I never use these. And I would love to know how many of you actually use your fluorescent colors because I'm sure that is something really cool that I'm missing out on. Um, anyway, that's my aside there. Another thing with the swatching, in this particular group, you also have access to a color family chart that Carolyn Spear put together. And I know from talking to her, she went to great length in putting this whole thing together and a lot of trial and error to get the color families right. Now this does not have all of the neutrals on here. Um, like all these, I'm sorry, all of these grays and cool grays, that's kind of obvious. But if you like to do a lot of color blending, this is another way to do it. And again, look at that. There's my pencil number one, uh, 914 cream, pencil number two. So I just looked up, um, I colored in her chart and then looked up the cream on this chart over here and saw that it was pencil one. So now I've got my pencil numbers here. So again, this is real easy. Now, if I want to do a color combo with some of these red violets, like lavender, mulberry, and dark purple maybe, I can quickly grab pencils 39, 40, and 42 out of my case and go. So that is the whole theory and thought process behind numbering your pencils. So it makes it easy to organize your pencil case, and it also makes it easy for you to find the right pencil quickly without having to dig through and read and flip over every single pencil that you have. Um, there are, before you, um, I talk about how to make your own swatch journal, there are a lot of um, Facebook groups out there. This one was Teresa Ivanor's face, Facebook group. Um, this is for my Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. So what's nice about this is here on this color swatch, um, she's got a dry color and a wet color so again, you can use that as your resource. Um, so there's a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of swatch pages that already exist out there. Um, I will be right back with a, oops, I just knocked my stand, a uh, swatch book that I want to share with you guys real quick. Hang on for just a second. Okay, um, there are a lot of cool things like this big book of color charts. This is Ruby Charm Colors. I. I'm such a fan of hers. I am not, by the way, getting paid for endorsing her stuff or any of these groups um, that I'm showing you guys today. And oh, that looks like a Dallas Cowboy star. I never noticed that. Maybe she's a fan. I think she lives in Michigan though, but you never know. They say it's God's team, but whatever. I'm actually a Fairweather fan, so don't judge me. Um, okay, so this book of color charts, what's nice about these is that, you know, here is the Prismacolor chart that she's laid out. And this is her own order. So again, I colored it in and I already had my pencils numbered. So I just put my pencil numbers out to the side like that. So it's kind of random. But what I don't like is that this book is two-sided. And the, note, the paper is very nice, but I don't know if you can see it. But the, um, let me see if, I, oh, see if I can zoom in here. The, color circles from the page above up here uh, has worn off down here. So now you can have the pencil from the previous page that's facing it rub off onto this page. There's no separator. So I don't like that at all. The other thing I don't like, and I'll show you here, is that on the Black Widow pencils, um, her book at the time it was printed didn't have the new dragon uh yeah the new dragon set so here's the spider scorpion cobra and monarch and then i bought the dragon set and it didn't exist so look what i did <laughs> just in a blank space i just shoved all the colors in here as best i could so what we're going to do today i'm going to teach you how to make your own color swatch journal with numbering your pencils and we're it's going to be a little bit of an art project um, all you are going to need to do this is a pencil, um, maybe a black fine liner, an eraser. You'll need a straight edge of some sort, um, some tape. This looks like a junk drawer, doesn't it? And then I just grabbed, just grab a small coin. So in the U.S., I grabbed a dime. If you're in the U.K., I don't know. What, or Canada, what your equivalent would be, but just a, a small coin. You don't need anything big. If you grab a quarter, here, I've got a quarter line right here. 
that's a big color, that's a big swatch circle to color in. So a dime will usually do it. So something sort of small, but any sort of a round template. If you have a, like a, um, a cutout template, like now this is for knitting needles that has the little holes. But if you have something like that where you can just easily draw a circle, grab that. And um, I will be right back. I'm gonna get set up and then we'll get started. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out um, is I am going to be coloring, I'm sorry, swatching for my Black Widow pencil sets. And because they are all sold in separate sets, I had a hard time finding um, like a color order that I could follow. And then I came across this color chart by My Colorful Country Life um, on her site. It's free. Um, but look what it is. It's really nice because it compares Prismacolors to Polychromos to Luminance to Black Widows, blah, 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 all the different pencil brands. So it will show you if something, if you're looking at something and somebody used eggshell and Prismacolor and you have Polychrom, I'm sorry, you have Black Widows, you can grab the cream pencil and that would be the equivalent. So it's a nice conversion chart. So this is the order I'm putting my Black Widow pencils in, um, just FYI. Oh, also, um, Nicola Lehman has a very good video where she covers this chart, and I will leave a link in the description to her YouTube channel and her video. Her channel is wonderful, and she does, guys, the most amazing color alongs, and I always bow down to her color blending skills. They are fantastic. So, um, anyway, so this is the order I'm going to follow. I've already um, swatched the first 24 pencils from this. So here's what this is going to look like. I'm going to do a page and I'm going to break it up into sections. So I've got 24 little boxes for each of my pencils. So this right here, I got this off of Amazon. It's a mixed media pad. It's 120 pound paper with 60 sheets. It's spiral bound, heavyweight, bleed proof. Um, so I just thought I'd get something like this that originally I was looking for watercolor paper because I was thinking about, you know, um, my Inktense pencils and swatching with those. Um, but then I found this multimedia, uh, paper and, or mixed media and I thought I'll try that. And it's been really nice. So on the first page, look, I'm fancy. I just took <laughs> alcohol markers and wrote Black Widow. You don't have to do anything fancy, but, um, I think the way I'm gonna use this journal, I'm gonna have different brands in here. So eventually, excuse me, I do wanna to go to an office supply store and get tabs that I can put on the book. So this will be the section for Black Widow pencils. So I've got 180 pencils in total, um, 24 pencils per page. So that means I need seven and a half pages like this. So what I've done, I've already pre-lined and taken my dime and drawn in the circles for most of these pages. I don't have the last page done. I thought we would do that one together. So we will get started. So here, um, I need three columns. So I'm gonna get my straight edge and my pencil. And I believe I did it like about, I just did it kind of by eye. You can measure it out if you want to. And I just lightly took my pencil and drew like this. So I've got two, I don't know if this is showing up on the camera, two vertical lines here. Now for this section, these are gonna be about one inch, like eight one inch sections-ish. So I'll just kind of wing it again. Um, and you know, when I go into winging it mode, it can backfire on me. So there's one, and these aren't gonna be perfectly straight. Two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, whoops, okay, so maybe that's a little bit bigger, but we're only gonna use half the page anyway. I'll do another one down here just for grins. Okay, so once you have your lines drawn, We've got all of our little sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, okay, 24. All right, so now you can take your dime, just lay it down. Let me zoom in, make sure that's in focus. 
and I'm just gonna trace around the dime, make a little circle. And these, look, it's wobbly. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know I'm not a fan of perfection because I am the most imperfect person I know. Always making mistakes. And I don't know if you caught the mistake on the swatch page I showed y'all. So I will point that out for you in a little bit. So I only need half of this page. That just means I need 12. So we'll draw these in here. But you get the idea. So it's just drawing these circles in. And that's what the eraser is for, is if you um, don't like the order you're putting them in, you make a mistake and you've got a line hanging out of your circle because your coin slipped when you were tracing it. Uh, whatever reason. Oops, and I'm sorry, I just realized I'm doing this out of camera now. Okay. And sometimes over here on the edge, it's a little trickier to get in there. Now, one thing I will say, oops, so after tracing this for a little while, remember pencils smudge, right? Y'all remember that, right? Okay, you will get a lot of this carbon on the side of your coin because you're tracing up against the edge. So be careful about, maybe after you do a page, um, pick it up and wipe it off with a tissue because it can get ugly. Okay, and where is my handy dandy brush? Here we go. All right, so you can see I've got a little smudge here, something there. Okay, so there are, there are our circles. So we've got 24 circles. So now that I've shown you how I set up the page, I wanted to actually swatch some with you guys. So here is the first page. I swatched by the way there's my mistake this is what happens when you are trying to write down your pencil name and your husband walks in and starts talking to you about what he's making for dinner and then you write down scorpion because it was from the scorpion set instead of the name of the pencil so there you go um, so don't let your husband's talk to you while you're swatching how about that all right so the next one I'm gonna do four pencils with you so let's just zoom in here Okay, so now you can put your straight edge aside, your dime, everything else. So the next pencil I have is Sunset. Um, and this one, oops, here we go. What I do here, I just kind of draw a circle, like a little, almost like a, is that a crescent moon? Is that what you would call that? So I just color this section in dark. I try not to color over the edge of that pencil because like I said, it does smear and it could smudge. You don't want it to smudge into your pretty colors, but you've got your handy dandy eraser just in case it does. So this side I color dark and then the rest of it, I just sort of color in white. And I hope this is something useful for you guys. I've um, been wanting to make something like this for a while. And this finally gave me the perfect excuse. So we did 24 on the other page. This will be number 25. So I'm getting my fine liner out. I'm gonna write 25. And this is CB44. CB means it's from the Cobra set. So CB44, and this is called Sunset. So what you would do here, this is going to be your pencil number in your case, and this is the actual pencil number from the manufacturer. So if it's Prisma, it will say PC something. If it's Polychromos, it will just be a simple number like 121, like we just saw. And then this is the name of the pencil color. So now the fun part is putting the number on the pencil. Um, I got a packet of numbers here off of Amazon. And these are little stickers that and they, they come in different um, varieties. So this sticker pack has numbers from one to 200 and there's several sheets of each. So since I've got 180 pencils, I'm just gonna go through two of these sheets. So this is pencil 25. I love these because they're peel and stick. You can actually print, make your own labels on your printer if you wanted using just like mailing labels. Okay, so I just 
peeled that off and stuck it on the bottom of the pencil. One other thing that I do, and this is a Kim thing, <laughs> I take my tape and take a tiny little strip off of here because I am hard on my pencils and I just tape around the edge of that label. Um, so I just taped it from this side back over to this side to keep it on there because you, you slide that in and out of the pencil case and it's real easy for that label to eventually come off. So there you go. So we've colored the circle. We've labeled it 25. Make sure you actually match that. We wrote down the manufacturer number and then the um, color name. So let's do another one. Uh, the next one is Serpent. This is from the Dragon Set. By the way, these um, Black Widow names are just awesome. They are, oh my gosh, just the most fun variety of color names I've ever seen. And, you know, it's funny because when I did the Amazon paper video, at the time I only had the Monarch set. And I just had to go back and get the rest of them, you guys. I just, uh, it was a weakness of mine. And um, I'm really glad that I did. These, um, these are wax-based pencils, by the way. And they are laying down on this paper really nicely. I know they also work really beautifully on Amazon paper. I've colored in um, a Millie, Mar not Millie, uh, Maria Trolley book with Black Widows. And the result was just so pretty. Um, anyway, so, and these are really, they're relatively inexpensive, I think, compared to other pencil brands. All right, so this is going to be 26. DG-130, y'all can see that. And this one is called Serpent. Okay, do a couple more. Oh, whoops, gotta put the, gotta put the label on, so let me do that here. So I'm just putting it kinda near the bottom. And you know, it's not straight, but it's okay. I'm the only one that has to look at these, so that doesn't bother me. If you are a perfectionist, you can have a lot of fun lining those up. Okay, so there we go, 26. The next one we have is called Skin. I just got this set yesterday. This is from the SL, the Skin Light book, not book, box. They have um, two tins, and their stuff comes in little tins of skin tones. They have dark skin tones and light skin tones. So the darker skin tones is SD and this is SL. So I do like that the way that they are labeled, I'll always know which set they came out of. So especially if I'm, you know, checking out something that somebody else colored and they said they used the Monarch set, then I know the pencil name would start out with MN. Okay, that is a really pretty skin tone. I have a page that I'm coloring with a lady on it and I've been trying to figure out what color skin tones to use. This peachy one might be pretty. She's tropical, so she's on a beach. That might be pretty. Okay, but I don't know. We'll just, we'll see. Okay, so this is 27, SL002. Oops, I forgot to put my little zero thing up there. This is saffron. You can tell I'm a computer programmer, or used to be back in the day with my little zeros with the slashes through there. Okay, um, so 27, I need label 27. Grab that. Okay, I got that put on there. I'm gonna take the piece of tape. And again, I'm just taking the tape and I'm putting it, um, hello, here we go on the edge here and wrapping the tape around the outside to grab the other edge. So that's how I'm doing that. So that's 27. And then the last one we'll color together. This is Toadstool from the Black Widow set. It's BW. Okay. All right. One other thing too, um, I don't know if you guys follow Color with Dan, 
on Instagram or YouTube. He has quite an extraordinary channel and coloring style. He does the most amazing color journals every month. And he rolls a YouTube video showing you how he's setting up his journal for the month. And it, I'm just blown away with his artistry and creativity because it uh, it's really cool. He'll set up pages to track. Here's how many pages I've colored this month. Here's how many books, things like that. And it's, it's like a bullet journal on steroids. And his penmanship is gorgeous. So this is like... Um, play school compared to what you'll see on his channel. So I'll leave a link to one of his videos there for y'all to check out. Uh, okay, so this is number 28 and BW03 Toadstool. Okay, so one last thing that I did on the front page that I haven't done here is I did take my straight edge and marked in, I took my fine liner and went over my outline or my pencil lines. So I'll just do that real quick. And that leaves a nice um, delineation. Let's see here if I do it this way, if you can see it. For each of these sections, it just makes them stand out a little bit better. Oops, my line got off a little bit there. I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, we'll do it again here. And that's what's nice is you can always take your eraser and go back and erase any um, remaining pencil marks you don't want. Okay, here, oops. All right. I tried to find a ruler and all I found was this paper cutter thing. Um, how many of you were scrapbookers back in the day? Yeah, scrapbooking. Okay, so that's how that's going to look. Um, again, if we look at the first page, oops, that's what a finished page will look like. All right, one other thing I wanted to show you that you can do is you can take, and I'll do it on this last page that we drew back here. You can take some of your sections, all right, like here, and we can make, um, let me get rid of this line right here, and we could make a place to record some of our favorite color combinations. Okay. So if I take, another straight edge here. All right. And let's do like this. Uh-oh. That pencil line went rogue. Okay. So let's, I'll just take these four colors I just used here. And let's say this is a color combo that I love and I want to preserve and record so I can always refer back to it. So what I'm going to do is start out with the first color. And we're just gonna color this in as if we were coloring a little section on a coloring page with a color combo. So I'll just start out with this. This is Serpent. But what you can do is you can use these journals to record your combos or any other favorite things. You can, um, like I said, make them be anything you want them to be. You can um, do like Dan and record um, things you want to track about your coloring, your coloring journey. Maybe you have a page you're working on and you want to write down the pencils that you're using for that page. Um, stuff like that. So, but your journal is your own. So you can be as creative and inventive as you'd like. I'm actually not a fan of this color combo, at least not yet, but maybe, we'll see. All right, let's pretend this is just the most stellar 
fantastic color combo you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> these, these colors are actually almost too similar, but they're pretty. All right. So here we've got, so we've got a quad, right? Four, four colors we've laid down for color combo. So what you can do, we know this first color was this pencil, 25. So 25, and you don't even have to put everything in here. You can just write the pencil numbers if you wanted. 25, sunset, then I used 26, Serpent, and then I used 27, Saffron. Oh, I didn't put a sticker on this, you guys. I hope you called me out on it. Toadstool. Okay, let me get a sticker on this guy real quick. Um, but that's another way that you can keep track of your color combos that you find, that you come across. You use a combo on a page and you don't want to forget it. Um, so you can also put these in your swatch journals. There we go, 28, just proof that I did it. So yeah, that's what I've got for you today. Um, let me know in the comments if this is something you guys are gonna try. And I would love to see if you actually create your own swatch journals, what you do with them, because there are so many cool and creative things out there. Um, the sky's really the limit. So again, um, thank you for watching today and tuning in. I'll leave a lot of links in the description for you. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.